The field of 68 is down to four after a more than chaotic than usual March madness. Here are the last teams standing. Kansas in the battle of the Blue Bloods. They took down Duke 85 to 81 in overtime. They will now take on the Villanova Wildcats who easily beat Texas Tech and Loyola Chicago. The Cinderella's of the tournament. They beat Kansas State on Saturday. They are only the fourth 11 seed to reach the final four. They will take on Michigan who beat Florida State in a close one on Saturday. So here is your final four bracket. The games are this coming Saturday and the winners will play in the championship game next Monday night. Joining us now to break it down is Bill Ryder, host of Writer's Block on CBS Sports HQ. Bill, let's start with the big Cinderella story of the tournament. Sister Jean and the Loyola Ramblers, what do they have to do against Michigan to add another chapter to their Cinderella story? You know, j just keep doing what they've done. They've earned their way here. They're one of the most efficient teams in the country, particularly on three-point shots. They're, I think 16, 17 this year in three-point shooting. They're going up against a really difficult Michigan team. They've shot really well in this tournament, but if they stay poised, if they move the basketball, if they keep looking for open shots and, and hit those shots, I mean, I'm done doubting it. It is a real Cinderella story. They can beat anybody. <laughs> so who do you like in this one? All right, so I know I'm, suppo I'm supposed to root for the Cinderella, but I'll just be self-interested. I have Michigan in my bracket going all the way, and I do think Michigan is playing of the teams that are left. Maybe the best basketball of anybody. They're coming off that Big Ten uh, tournament championship where they won four in a row, so they're playing great basketball. I took Michigan at the start. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to all of you who want Loyola. I think it's Michigan. All right. Well, the other game has a pair of number ones facing off. So what are you looking for in the Villanova versus Kansas matchup? Oh, I cannot. I cannot wait for this basketball game. As good as Duke Kansas was, and it was a great game. This game is just as intriguing on paper for no. And it's two blue bloods, right? So Nova. Maybe the best offense in the country with a star point guard. And Kansas, and we had Bill Self on the on the CBS Sports HQ show that I do a couple weeks ago. And I'm not gonna lie, I was I was a little and I like Bill, I like Coach Self. I doubted this team. They're not very long, they're not very tall. They run out four guards, and he said it. He said they can st stick with anybody because big men and other teams have to come out and guard their shooters. Their shooters make shots. They shoot better than 40% on threes. So the question for Kansas is the question it's always going to be, can they continue to knock down long-range shots? They've done it the entire tournament. If they can, they've got a real chance to take down Villanova. All right, so what do you think? Who do, who do you have winning? I, you know what? I, I, I should. I know I should go Villanova because I had Kansas out super early. Don't look at that side of the bracket that I put together. But Bill Self, I think, is one of the greatest coaches in the history of the game. He's a Hall of Famer for a reason. I don't think he gets the credit he deserves. And just talking to him about this team a few weeks ago, it's a special group. There are some great shooters. They've got some guys who are Malik Newman in particular who do not shy away from the big moment. I think it'll be a very difficult game, but I like Kansas to get it done. All right, Bill. So you have Michigan and Kansas <laughs> advancing. Who wins the whole thing? I did attend the Missouri School of Journalism, so I'm actually contractually not allowed to pick Kansas to win anything all the way out of rivalry mm -hmm. reasons. So I'll I'll go Michigan. I, I I think it. I mean, it's such a it's such a tough game, but Michigan is playing really great basketball. I think uh, I think the Wolverines get it done. All right, we'll see if you're right on that. Turning now to the NBA. Last night on 60 Minutes, Steve Croft profiled the NBA superstar known as the Greek Freak. Is Giannis underrated? Do you think he can be among the all-time greats? Yeah, I, I really believe that he can be the face of the league in one to three or four years, and that's saying something because there is this remarkable batch of young stars that are on the uh, on the uh, that are ascending right now in the league. Giannis's personality, the way that he plays, his remarkable skill set. I'm a believer he can be. Whenever LeBron stops doing ridiculously amazing things, what is he now, 33? Whenever LeBron just takes a little step back, I think it's Giannis who can fill that, that gap and be maybe the face of the league in a year or two or three. The guy is perhaps one of the most remarkable pure talents we've seen in a generation. All right, then we will all have to learn how to properly pronounce his last name. <laughs> it's hard. I, I'm in the Kumbo, I think. It's hard to do. Good job. All right, now finally, NFL defensive end Michael Bennett plans to surrender himself to police today. Explain to us what happened to lead to, lead to this. Yeah, this is a really interesting story. So a year and a half ago, not this past Super Bowl, but the one that the Patriots won, when the Patriots won that Super Bowl against Atlanta, one of the players who played for New England was Michael Bennett's brother. So during the celebration, the Patriots won, the confetti's falling, 
Michael Bennett, who was then a Seahawk, now an Eagle, forced his way allegedly onto the field. That's the allegation. Mm. He wanted to celebrate with his, his brother. And the allegation is that as part of forcing his way through security, he forced his way past an elderly woman in a wheelchair, oh. hurting her, injuring her. Obviously, they're saying that it's assault. And so on the left, and it's become this cultural phenomenon, on the left side of American politics, people are pointing to this as, as an example of a black man being silenced. And on the right side of American politics, People are saying this person who's been held up as a model of liberalism has his own dark secret. So it's mm -hmm. it's an ugly story for the NFL, and it's become a, a political lightning rod for both sides of uh, the things we tend to debate about in this country. It's a sad story either way. All right, Bill Ryder, thank you so much for that. You're welcome. And don't forget, you can watch Bill's show, Writer's Block, Monday through Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern on CBS Sports HQ. Today, he will talk to the new coach of the Memphis Tigers, Penny Hardaway, along with NFL star tight end of the Kansas City Chiefs, Travis Kelsey.